This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. My name is Pratik and in this new video, we are going to discuss how to redact PII data in GA4. So let's get started. And although the topic sounds a little jargonized, but believe me, this is going to be very simple. Or is it? Let's find out. So what are we going to cover in this video? First, we'll start with what is a PII with some examples, and then we will learn how PII gets into Google Analytics, your property. We will also see how to find PII data in your GA4 property and why is it important to redact it. And primarily, we will be focusing on the ways to redact PII. So that would be the main focus of this video. And what are the challenges? What are the challenges that this video aims to address? So the first one would be the accidental collection of PII and over time I have seen many enterprises are collecting PII unintentionally that is they are not even aware that they might be collecting or their GA4 properties might be collecting some PII data and by this by doing this they are essentially breaching the data protection regulations such as GDPR or CCPA or any other regional laws that they come under. And, and it also violates the Google's terms of conditions, which terms of services, which can in fact lead to account termination as well. So that is a big deal. And at the core of it, without which there would be no privacy laws or uh, you would not be watching our technical videos like this, uh, is the user privacy. Because it is the ethical responsibility of the data collecting entity to protect users' privacy and have their trust intact. And even from the analytics point of view uh, about data integrity, PII, which very often is have a very high cardinality, it can skew your analytics data, affecting the accuracy of your reports and insights, etc. So that is it. And there obviously is a risk of data leaks because uh, the PII is getting stored as at a place where it is not recommended. So that that data leak may lead to reputational damages or even worse, it can lead to uh, legal consequences. So it is very important that your GA4 property uh, does not have any PIA. And uh, how is this video going to help you with that? So this video is going to provide solutions for preventing the collection of PIA. And I'm going to demonstrate the methods for redacting PIA data in GA4 such that uh, the integrity and compliance of your GA4 data is ensured and you are safe and compliant to all the privacy laws that, the, that you may come under. So without further ado, let's begin with understanding what is a PII. So PII is the short form of personally, personally identifiable information. And as the name suggests, PII is any data that alone or in combination with other information can be used to uniquely identify an individual. So this is the key phrase, uh, it can be used to uniquely identify an individual. And for the sake of understanding, I have subcategorized this PIA in two uh, subcategories. And I'll take a note that GA4 does not uh, distinguish between PIA, uh, between direct PIA or indirect PIA. This is just for the sake of understanding that direct PIA is something then uh, that in itself can identify a person without any cross-referencing with other data. So uh, some direct identifiers would include uh, full names, email addresses, physical addresses, phone numbers, SSNs, any government ID numbers, or driver licenses, etc. So you get the idea. While indirect PII would require some linkage with other data, uh, which they can use, and together they can identify a person. For example, it may be the date of birth, place of birth, IP addresses, or medical records of an individual. So, I will again reiterate that uh, GA4 does not uh, subcategorizes or categorizes PII into direct or indirect PII. This is just for the sake of understanding. And I'll also mention that there is uh, some uh, gray area involved in defining what is the outer boundary of uh, PII. So say for example, it is uh, quite debatable in some communities that whether a zip code would be uh, considered a PII or not in GA4. So we will not uh, bother ourselves with that discussion, but rather learn how to redact any kind of PII that might be 
unsafe for you to keep in your GA4 property. So that being said, let's move on and understand how does PII get into Google Analytics properties. So uh, over time, I have seen most of the most common uh, entry points for the unintentional PII collection is the URL query parameters. So what happens is uh, the PI data, the sensitive information is included in URL parameters, often in form of form submission data or site search data, and it gets transferred, it, and it gets transferred to the GA4 property. Another entry point could be uh, a, miscon a misconfigured custom dimension, such as you might have uh, created a custom dimension called last name or first name. So that that is uh, illegal to do in uh, GA4 because that is considered a PII and uh, might be unsafe for you to use that. And then there is the breaded user ID, wherein uh, an incorrect implementation of user ID uh, without proper an anonymization of the user ID field can uh, be considered a PII. So we do have a complete uh, video about correctly implementing the user ID in this channel itself. You can find it out or we can link this uh, in the description below. And about e-commerce data, it, it I have seen uh, many uh, enterprises uh, collecting physical addresses of users in checkout pages as well. In uh, say, for example, in page URLs or uh, or with transaction details. So that again is uh, one of the common entry points uh, where where from where the unintentional PII is collected. And then uh, there are some third party integrations or auto tagging, which automatically generate such a URL that is not sanitized for PIA data and tracking such URL uh, involves getting PIA into your G4 property. And another uh, uh, another entry point would be incorrect configuration, which may lead to count any form data that is considered as PIA into your GA4 account or the property rather. So we will see how to check for PIA data in GA4. So there are two ways. First, you can use the standard reports or the explore reports as well. You can search for PIA patterns using the search feature within the reports to find common PIA patterns such as email. Uh, we will see how that is done. And we will also check for user defined parameters if there are any user defined parameters or custom dimensions that might be collecting PIA. And let's let's jump into GA4 to see how that is done. So all right, so we are in our GA4 property, and to search for any PI data, let's go to uh, standard reports. Let's say we are looking for any emails in our page URLs. So we'd open a report that is for page path, or let's say page path, and then we will search here for any. Uh, patterns of PIA. Say for example, we are searching for email, so we know that an email must contain an app symbol. So we'll search for an app symbol and it will list out all the, uh, if there are any page paths which contain an app, app symbol. So because I, this is a test property and I do not have uh, too much of data, would not show any results, but this is the way you can find out. You can also search for any uh, IP addresses uh, with similar approach in any of the standard reports that you suspect might be collecting a PII. You can also use the explore reports. Uh, you can access the explore reports from here. And then once it opens, you can create a new blank report. Let's see, I have just created this one. And then you can select a dimension uh, which you suspect might be getting an API. The most often it is the page location or uh, page referral which gets the PII. So I'll select page location and I'll click and also select page referral. You can select the related metrics for it. And then I would drop that. Uh, into rows and columns like this and I can use this filter uh, option here. So if I want to search for page location, 
if it contains any PIA, so I'll select page location here. And then for condition, let's say we want to use regexes. So if matches regex anything, can start with anything, will contain an at symbol and then can end with anything. So if I do this, if there is any page location that contains uh, an app symbol, it will be shown here and from that you can identify a uh, email address. You can modify this regex as per your use. This is just for an example. I'm not making it super complex. Uh, you can uh, get any regexes that matches an email address, for example, uh, over, all over the internet and you can use it here. You can uh, also uh, deselect a page location from here, remove this and rather search for page refer. And now if you select page refer and do the same, it is matches regexes and then the suspected regex for any PIA would be, we'll be inputting it here. And now it will search for any add the symbol in the page refer itself. So I don't have any, so this is not showing up in the results. So that is how you search for uh, PIIs or any specific thing in any dimension. Let's also see where to see for custom dimensions that might be, that we suspect is a PIA. So you can go here to your custom definitions. And in this list, I have only one dimension. You might have many. So you must check here if any of these uh, dimensions are uh, considered as PIA. So that is how we check for PIA. Let's get back to our slide. Great. Now that we have learned how to search for PI data in our, in our GA4 properties, let's learn how to redact that. So I, I can outline two ways to do that. First one is the GA4 PI redaction feature, which is the safer and the recommended way. And it can redact up to 30 user defined query parameters from GA4, including page location, page refer, page path, link URL, video URL, and form destination. And another one is the GTM method, which uh, is the older method, uh, which was used when GA4 had not released its inbuilt PIA redaction feature. So this involves overriding dimensions that you suspect is collecting PIA with the sanitized version of it. So after uh, overriding the dimension after redacting the PIA data. We'll look into details of both one by one. And first, let's start with the GA4 redact PIA feature in GA4. So this method uh, redacts the PIA data by identifying text patterns which are likely email addresses across all the parameters and URL query parameters. And as we discussed, it, it can either uh, redact for email addresses or any uh, any query parameters that you define. So it will check the page location, page refer, page path, link URL, video URL, form destination, etc., uh, which are included as part of event parameters. And it evaluates these events before they are collected to find and, and remove any text that it understands as PIA. So it, it acts like a gatekeeper so that, and it does not let the uh, PIA get into your GA4 property. And you can configure your data redaction settings in for your web stream data. And it is turned on by default uh, if your property is created after the release of this feature or if uh, you have created your property before, and you can follow the steps that I'm going to show you next. So let's turn to GA4 and see how to turn that feature on. Now we are back again to our GA4 property and we will open from the admin section. We'll click on the admin section and then under data collection and modification, there is data stream. So we'll open that which will list, list our data streams. We will select the data stream, our web data stream, which will open this page. And then there is this option, redact data. We'll select that. And if you want to redact emails, we just have to turn this one, this option on. And we can list all the query parameters that we want to redact. Say for example, I have already 
uh, inputted it uh, inputted the name parameter here which i wanted to redact you can remove it and just name it like that i can press a space and then it will create a tag sort of tag and then i can enter a new query parameter that i wanted to redact say for example i want to redact g so so the next question is where are these parameters that we are redacting so it is from your uh, url parameters these are your url parameters say for example in this url there is a query parameter called email and there is a query parameter called message so it might happen that user might enter say for example this is your address box so user might enter their zip code or any any pia address say for example they are again enter their email here so that would be here and you want to redact this entire message thing from uh, getting the tracked in ga4 but you want to track this url so what you can do is you can redact this message uh, query parameter altogether so any value that the message is holding would be replaced by a redact text so we can say the query parameter is message so now we can also test that so let's say i want to test it so i have copied this query parameter and i'll enter it here and preview the redact data so you can see because we selected the email redaction any query parameter that is an email or resembles an email is redacted it is replaced by this uh, this uh, redacted text and then we also entered the name zip and message so zip is not there name is there so name is redacted message is redacted so uh, if we see that uh, it is what we wanted so we can uh, go to the top here and save this and now just like that your reduction ga4 reduction feature is turned on and it will start redacting the data all right so now that we have learned how to use that PIA, redact PIA feature in ga4 let's also understand the limit its limitations and its scopes so currently it is only for a web stream so if you have another streams like uh, for apps that is not uh, those streams are excluded from this feature and this would also not work for http headers which might include refers and where, where the pii can be present and one major limitations of this uh, feature is that it might uh, potentially over redact some data uh, which resembles a PII. So GA4 might uh, mistake something as an email address wherein actuality it is not an email address. So some legitimate text resembling a PII can also be redacted. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And this reduction feature is not applied to measurement protocol hits or data inputs. So because measurement protocol hit is something that you make from server to server so you need to keep in mind that you are not including any kind of PIA data in, in your measurement protocol hits same with the data import feature you must uh, your data that you are importing must be sanitized beforehand uh, uh, before pushing it into the GA4 so these are some of the limitations and about the second method that we discussed, the GT method, uh, I will out outline first what are the steps for it and then we can jump into GTM to see how that is done. The first step would be to identify PII. You must first identify where might where is your PII and what is your PII that is being collected and where it might be coming from. And once yeah, that you have identified that dimension, we can implement the script that I'm going to show you in a little while, uh, the, the reduction script. And then we will test the setup and then publish the changes. So that being said, let's jump into GTM to see how to use the uh, reduction logic. So now we are in our GTM and we'll see how to implement the reduction logic from GTM. So to, to do that, we will uh, open our variable section in GTM. But before that, we must identify what is our 
which dimension is getting the uh, PII. So say for example, this is our contact us form and when the user submits a form with any dummy data, the URL contains this email and message and this message can also again contain any PII and there is name as well. So we want to replace uh, or, this, or sanitize this uh, URL with uh, redacted query parameters in GTM. So for doing that, we will go to our variable section and create a new variable, new custom JavaScript variable. You can click new here and then select a custom JavaScript. So this will open a page like this. And here we, you will paste the code. We will provide the code in the description below. And I have already done that. So it might, it will look something like this. So what we are doing here is we are taking the page URL, the default page URL, anything that you uh, put inside double curly braces is a GTM variable. So it is taking the value of this page URL into a URL variable and it matches uh, uh, this against all the regexes that is listed here. So anything that matches this regex in the page URL is uh, replaced by this text, redacted email and so on. Anything that is that matches this regex will be re replaced by this redacted telephone and so on. And so it, it checks for all of all of these regexes and replaces accordingly. You can add uh, additional regexes here or change the regexes as per your need. You just need to add one more object here this is an array of objects in the same pattern you will enter a name a regex that you want and a replacement text and then save this text so you can see this is returning the sanitized url so once we save this i've already done that this will be having the sanitized page url and now to use this you can go to your google tag in the tag section i will open the google tag and here i'll overwrite the page location parameter which is a predefined parameter you can see a small check mark here with the sanitized page url that we just created and we'll, i'll save this tag so any any page location now will be replaced by the sanitized page URL. And if you have any page view tag like this, you can also overwrite it here. But this will do for uh, this will do if you just do it in the config tag. So once that is done, we can preview it. I'll also open the debug view in the meantime so that we can see the light reduction. And just for the, just for the clarity, I'll disable the uh, GA4 uh, reduction feature we just turned on so that I can demo that the GTM method is also working. So I'll remove these just for the demo. I'll save that. And then I'll open the debug view. Should come up. Right. So now that we are in our preview mode, uh, I have navigated to my contact page and I'll submit this with some data. So I have two emails, one in the email address field and then the, in the message field. I'll submit this and this is the URL that gets formed. 
and I can quickly check my debug view as well. This is the page view from home page that I just navigated to. This is the navigation click for contact us and then this is the contact us page. And now I submitted that form and from here I'll again navigate back to the home page. So now there is this data being sent. Form submit is done. Uh, that was on the contact us page and from where I navigated back to the home page. And we can see from the hits that are, that are sent if I open this navigation clip. Uh, the page location is has redacted email and again it has redacted email that because we had also put email in the message field uh, so it is that the code is working we can also probably see this from deeper view if it updates in correct time so page location has the same value the redacted email and then again the message parameter is also redacted so the GTM script is working fine. So that is how you implement the reduction logic in GA4. And now that we are happy with our changes, we can submit it and the changes will be live. Great. So now that we have learned how to search for PI data and redact it, let's discuss some best, best practices around it. So the first one is to take prevent images because we know prevention is better than cure. So it is best that you do not collect uh, PIA in any form itself uh, when you are planning for your analytics measurement. And if you have to redact some data uh, from PIA which you suspect is a PIA, so I would recommend you use the GA4 redaction features. So we, as we discussed two methods, among the two, I would suggest you that you keep using the GA4 redaction feature. And you can always leverage the GTM for additional control over your data. But if you are a beginner to GTM or GA4, I would suggest you keep using the GA4 reduction feature. And as always in the end, it is the responsibility of the data collecting entity, you who is responsible for collecting the safe data and not uh, anything that is illegal or in violation of Google's terms of services, etc. And I'll again reiterate that it, at the core, it is the user's privacy and their trust that needs to be respected. So with that, uh, let's conclude this video and that you have gained some new superpowers. And signing off, thank you. May the force be with you.